What we first of all need to realize is that actually equality is a relatively new value and that most human societies, at least from the agricultural revolution onwards, were based on hierarchies and on the belief that hierarchies are a natural and just way to construct a society. Most human societies were founded on a belief in natural or divinely ordained hierarchies between classes, between people, between genders. It's only in the last century or two, really, that equality became such a central and such an important value for humankind. And you can say that, to a large extent, uh, the central theme of 20th century history is a story of trying to overcome the gaps, to destroy the old hierarchies of race and class and gender, and to create a more equal society. Not that in 2000 the world was completely equal, certainly not, but it was a more egalitarian place, a more equal place than it was in 1900. However, when we look to the future, to the next few decades, the danger is that many of the achievements of the 20th century will be nullified, that many of the gaps that were narrowed down in the last century will open up again, and indeed that new gaps will appear that will make society much more unequal than ever before. First of all, we need to take into consideration the possibility of opening or reopening gaps between different countries and different areas of the world. If we look back to the 19th century, humankind in the Industrial Revolution gained control, gained mastery of enormous new powers, the power of steam, of oil, of electricity, of radio. And these new powers gave humans the ability to produce textiles and food and vehicles and weapons much more cheaply and abundantly and efficiently than ever before. However, these new powers and these new manufacturing abilities were not shared equally between all the countries, all the societies, all the races. Rather, it was a relatively small number of countries that led the Industrial Revolution, that gained control over these new powers. Most countries, most societies did not industrialize at the same pace. They were left far behind. An immense gap opened, and the few industrialized nations basically conquered the world, subjugated it, and exploited everybody else. It took countries like China and India about 150 years to close the gap that opened in the 19th century. And some areas of the world, especially in Africa and the Middle East, even today are still far away from closing the gaps now, what we are facing in the coming decades is a new and even more dramatic industrial revolution. Again, humankind is about to master new powers. This time, it's not steel and electricity and oil, but it's the power of computer algorithms and the power of biotechnology. This time, the new powers will not be used in order to produce and manufacture that just textiles and food and vehicles and weapons. This time, the main product of the economy in the 21st century are likely to be bodies and brains and minds. But as in the 19th century, so also in the 21st century, these new powers are unlikely to be shared equally by all the countries in the world. We are likely to see a few countries, a few societies leading this new revolution and most others being left far behind. And the danger is, that this time, if you are left behind, you will never get a second chance. Because the difference, the gap between a society that knows how to manufacture bodies and brains and minds, and a society that doesn't know how to do it, is far, far bigger than the gap between a society that knows how to produce a steam engine and a society that doesn't. So the first um, option for unprecedented inequality is between countries, 
between different human societies. But at the same time, we might also see uh, huge inequalities, huge gaps opening within societies between the upper classes and the lower classes, and much bigger than we saw in any previous time in history. Because throughout history, the difference between the rich and the poor, between the nobility and the common people, it was social difference, it was an economic difference, it was a political difference, but it was never a real biological difference in either physical or cognitive abilities between the king and the peasants. However, in the 21st century, with the help of especially biotechnology and also artificial intelligence, we might see, for the first time in history, social differences being translated into real biological differences, and humankind being split into different biological castes and even into different species, which is not really unprecedented, because if you go back in time 50,000 years ago, then you find planet Earth populated by at least six or seven different human species. Over the last 20,000 years, uh, however, only Homo sapiens uh, survived because we basically destroyed, eliminated all the others. This, in the long run, might be a very, very short interval between two periods when Earth was populated by several different human species at the same time. Thank you.